Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Dennis Borsch and today I'm going to talk about one wild variation called the Grunfeld. Now, this is very close to my heart as this was the weapon that actually gave me my first ever win against the Grandmaster. More specifically, Ivan Fargo, who was part of the national team of Hungary. So let's take a look. Now, here I played d5, which is the Grunfeld. However, in the past, d6 was the prominent move, leading to the King's Indian, played by Fischer, Bronstein, and many other legends of the game. However, d5 wasn't as popular. For following reason, you're actually giving up the center. So c takes d5 is the current meta. Opponent played knight f3. However, if c takes d5, knight takes d5, e4 takes takes. The first theoreticians thought that this is wonderful for white because of the bigger pawn center. However, more studies and Fisher's play showed that this is actually great for black, as black will have very good play against that center of whites. Yes, black doesn't have the center, and that is a drawback. However, with no center, it is much, much easier to strike on the d4 and e4 pawns. Bishop e3, queen a5, queen d2, castles, and in the long run, black is planning to undermine the d4 pawn with rook d8, knight c6, and eventually crush through the d4 square. However, my opponent played knight f3, bishop g7, and played queen b3, which is known as the Russian variation. d takes c4. Now, some would play c6, but is not in the spirit of the Grunfeld. The Grunfeld is a counter-attacking opening. You should always strive to undermine white's structure on d4, c4, and occasionally e4. So I took on c4 in hopes of kind of luring that queen closer to the center and also eyeing that d4 pawn, which will be a future target. Castles, e4, a6. And even though white has the center, the queen is a little bit misplaced on c4. It has moved out way too early. And with a6, which is known as the Hungarian variation, I'm trying to take advantage of that. Originally, the main line was bishop e2 here, played by Kasparov, b5, queen b3. But here, c5 was played by Peter Leko, dc, bishop b7, castle, takes, takes. And a fighting game ensued between Kasparov and Peter Leko which eventually ended up in a draw. However, my opponent wanted to punish me for this move of a6, but I was not nervous. Now, yes, I will have to move the knight, but I realized I could attack the queen in one go, and the queen is, of course, worth way more than the knight, so my grandmaster opponent had to move the queen. Knight d7, again, moving away and clearing the route for my bishop. So if my bishop will ever open up and the diagonals ever open up for this bishop, I will have the advantage. Let's say bishop e3, I would immediately strike with c5, a typical idea in the Grunfeld. And if dc, knight takes c5, black gets a very fine position. And an aggressive g7 beast. That is also fianchettoed over there on g7. So my opponent goes for e6, f takes, bishop e3, which was kind of a new line. And here I chose knight f6, which is a better move. Previously, knight b6 was the most popular one, but after h4, I was kind of worried about these battering ideas of h4, h5, and I will have to deal with many, many annoying threats by white. So I said, I don't want any funny business by my opponent. I'm going to defend it before it ever happens. a4, trying to create some weaknesses. And I said, no, I don't want to create weaknesses. Because if I take, rook takes a4, lots of my pawns on e6, e7, and a6 would become weak, and I might be ahead in pawn counts, but double pawns aren't worth a whole lot. So I decided, hey, I'm gonna rather give up a pawn, but your king is still in the middle, your queen is dilly-dallying around. Why not just go for the counterattack? Queen b4, knight c6, winning time, as it's of essence here. Queen c4, knight a5, Queen a2, rook b8. So you see an open file, your rook should take it. 
bishop takes a6, knight b3. And here I was very content with my position, as not only am I threatening the bishop, I'm threatening to take the rook as well. And if you take on c8, my queen might just show up on a6, stopping your king from castling. Bishop takes c8. Here I have to take on c8, because if knight takes a1, check here, queen takes a1, and white has two extra pieces and is soon to be castling. So I decided to take rook d1, which turns out to be a mistake, and a less greedy castling would have been better, because after knight takes c1, rook takes a1, White is the one who has compensation, as I have a rook for a bishop, but some ugly pawns, so white should survive this. However, rook d1 is a bit more stingy, but has one issue with it. After queen a6, that king will not be able to castle, and you can block my view with knight b5, because it runs into this neat little tactical trick. After a, b, I take your lady on a2. So my opponent played queen b1, trying to get there, but now I go for the attack with knight d5. Seeing knight d5, actually, my opponent changed the plan from queen d3 and went for queen e4, saying, hey, you might be losing another pawn. And I said, as long as your king is in the middle, I don't mind. I care about active pieces, and as we said before, the d4 square is crucial in the Grunfeld, so I'm going after that one. I takes d5. E takes, queen takes, e6, attacking the queen and getting ready to take on d4. C takes, knight takes, queen a5 check. Just before white could avoid these checks, I'm giving that check and there's no castling no more. Bishop d2, I'm just in time to take on b2 and have plenty of threats on d2 and that knight on d4. And if king e2, I can take here take here, bishop takes, queen takes, rook b4, with plenty of threats, and with this king dilly-dallying in the center of the board, I have more than enough compensation. So king f1, knight d4. I don't mind exchanging as long as there's a discord between the rooks and no communication, because the king is awkwardly placed on f1. My opponent played rook d4, but bishop takes d4 wouldn't have been better, because after takes, queen takes d4, I have rook d8 hitting this rook. And if you defend, I go queen b6, defending the pawn, attacking f2. So you don't have time to take here. You get checkmated. And if you go f4, boom, I take there. You take, rook takes d1, and the h1 rook falls. So my opponent had to go for rook takes d4, bishop takes d4, bishop takes d4. Queen takes a4. Precise calculation. I noticed that queen takes e6 is just one single check. And queen e5 is a little too late because I have queen d1. And you are not going to get on h8. Therefore, I'm the one who's winning. Your queen e1, queen takes d4. The g3 was played. Queen c4 check. Now I defend my pawn. King g2. Rook d8. Rook d1. Queen d5. I realized... I do not need to rush this position if I exchange the queens off. There is no way of getting out of this pin. So after rook d2, rook d8, I would be winning another piece, be a rook up. Therefore, after queen d5, my grandmaster opponent resigned. I really hope you enjoyed this little lesson on the Grunfeld, and I hope you, I incited your interest in this variation. So please leave a like or a comment below if you like this lecture and I'm going to see you guys next time.